The Gospel of Gold by G.S. Lewis With that, Silver lurched his long neck forward, and a shockwave of air burst from his mouth. Though it was not aimed at gold, the pulse threw him right off his feet. Spirit dipped below the aeroblast, and with a single flap of her wings, unleashed a wave of fire. The flames did not touch Silver at first, but seemed to take on a life of their own and surrounded him. When he moved to evade, they pursued until the Lugia was hemmed in. Then, from out of the sky, a bolt of pure white flame plunged down, as if from heaven itself. Silver did not scream, but his back arched with such undeniable agony that Gold thought he would break. After an intense moment, the fire dissipated, leaving Silver slouched and heaving. There was no trace of the dark mist upon him anymore. Gold saw that his body, in its natural state, was mostly white with a blue underbelly. He was sleek, aerodynamic, and aesthetically pleasing to the eye. In his first moment like this, seeing Silver deprived of all illusory facade, Gold couldn't help but think, What a beautiful creature he is! Silver really is like a swan! A king of swans! What an absolute tragedy that he fell to becoming such a hateful thing! You think I can't defeat you? Silver hissed, rearing up straight again. I have already killed you before. My only regret is that the rocks crushed you too fast. The next time I pin you, I will make sure you stay pinned, but not dead. Then I will be free to work again, and I'll be wiser than before to your future psych tricks. You have said it yourself, Spirit replied, as her luminosity reignited. My future sight will forestall any treachery on your part. You know not, snarled Silver contemptuously. You cannot see that far ahead. Gold felt a change in the atmosphere, so sudden that there was no time to brace for it. The fiery glow surrounding Spirit turned a deep lavender, and she plunged downward with unnatural speed, as if dragged by an invisible gravity well. The phoenix met the jagged surface with a sickening thud, a sound that was a knife in Gold's heart. To harm her was such a morbid, reprehensible act that it physically hurt him to witness. As he clutched his chest, he sensed a subtle fluctuation in Silver's psychic presence. There was rage, and even a sense of triumph at what he had just done. But something else stirred deeper down, further back even than the loneliness. Regret. Before he could wonder about it, the sensation was gone, if it had ever been there. Silver raised his wings, and there came an intense, rushing roar from behind gold. He looked and gasped at the sight of the tidal wave that loomed out of the ocean, casting its shadow over them all. Still on his back, Gold scrambled to grab a nearby jutting rock and steeled himself for impact, shutting his eyes. The wave careened down, collapsing upon both himself and spirit with an almighty crash. The din of it scattered Gold's thoughts, but when the water dispersed, the first thing that registered was confusion. He had been to the beach before, and he knew what it was like to be hammered by a brutal wave. His body and clothes were now soaked, but that was it. What gives? That should have wiped me out for sure. Am I still under protection? His eyes moved to spirit, and he felt the knife twist in his heart. She was getting slowly to her feet, but there was no longer a glow about her. Everything drooped, her head, her wings, her sunburst tail. What had before been color and light 
was now lowly and dim, a portrait of suffering. What's going on? thought Gold, gritting his teeth. Silver's winning! If I'm still safe, how did he find a way around her protection? Then he felt it again. Beneath all of Silver's malice, there was a twinge of shame and regret for what he had done. If he had been a person, and not a legendary psychic Pokémon of unchecked emotion, Gold might not have ever caught it. As Silver struggled upright, the epiphany hit him. She's letting him do this. She knows, as well as I do, that he has a sliver of conscience kindled, and she will nurse that flame. Don't you hold back on me! Screams Silver, whipping his wing and sending another windburst her way. Don't you dare patronize me! Gold shook his head. You don't know what you're saying. If she didn't choose to hold back, you'd be dead, Silver, and you don't get to die. This is your judgment day, and it's only day one. You get to live with this now. His stomach turned as Silver suddenly rounded on him. I can hear you, worm. Neither of us need die, but you will. Is it not why I summoned you here? With a sweep of his great wings, the giant bird Pokemon hurtled toward gold at terrific speed, jaws first. If my powers cannot affect you, I will simply bite your head off! Gold had no time to react, but several things happened in the next moment that Silver seemed not to have anticipated. As time slowed in Gold's perspective, he saw an orange glow illuminate his enemy's side. Silver noticed too, but he had committed to his charge, and there was no avoiding the trajectory of the oncoming attack. A five-pronged star of fire blasted into Silver's torso, sending him careening off course and into the sea. As Gold watched his writhing body skip the surface and go under, his eyes caught another movement on the water. It was a familiar-looking blue animal, bolting over the surface of the sea on all fours, cape billowing. Suicune? In a single bound, Suicune, faithful servant of spirit, leapt upon the rocky beach next to him. Gold didn't need to hear words to understand its intent. Get on! He shot a last look at Spirit, marveling at the steps she had taken, all that she must have done in the long past, and all that she would continue to do in the future. Bruises were already forming on her lower body, and her feathers were still sopping and ruffled, but a golden halo surrounded her once more. Even battle-worn, she still stood regal and majestic a creature long-suffering, who gave of herself without protest. Silver was not worthy of her, but then again, who was? The water began to bubble where Silver had gone under. Spirit met Gold's eye meaningfully. Go! Goodbye! He cried, grasping the crystal-shaped protrusion on Suicune's head for balance. I'll never... The water exploded upward from behind him, and Silver lifted into the air, emanating waves of fury. I will kill you all! He boomed, with wordless roars whose meanings were all too clear. All of you! But Suicune was already off, racing across the waves swifter than a deer in flight. Gold twisted his body for one more look back. And in the rapidly dwindling distance, he saw Silver and Spirit circling above the islet. Then, his center of gravity tilted, and he scrambled to grip the crystal horn to avoid falling off.